What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Well, we got a winter storm coming and it's coming fast. It's supposed to drop down in the low 20s tonight and get down into the teens tomorrow. And I don't have really a good heat situation going on here at the cabin. So I got to get something done. But I took the window unit back today at Lowe's and I went and got a propane heater. That's a 30,000 BTU. And then I also got these. 200 pound tanks of propane. Got those filled up. I think that's gonna work a lot better. And also not run that generator. That generator, the Predator 9000 with that 240 uh, heater slash air conditioner that was in the window was costing a gallon of gas an hour. And everybody knows what gas prices are right now. It was killing me. I've spent over $700 in fuel on this trip alone and I've only been here for six days. Now that is between the truck and the generators, but that's still a lot of money for six days of fuel. So we're going to get this propane installed. I'm going to bring you guys with me while we're doing it. I've never done this before. I do know I ended up with the Mr. Heater. Let me show you. Sorry about the lighting, guys. I don't have really good lighting set up here in the cabin either. I've only been here for a couple of days. But it's a 30,000 BTU. It has a wall mount or you can set it on legs. I'm going to hook it onto the wall. I'm actually going to put it right here in the living room area. And then I'm probably going to drill a hole straight through the logs i'm probably going to need about an inch hole i'll run the gas line through there put the tanks on the outside right there and use some spray foam to kind of fill it in i don't know if i'm going to do it lower or right here i kind of i'm thinking i might need to do it a little bit higher because i will have furniture and stuff in here and i kind of want to keep it on up that way i don't have to worry about any kind of fire hazards or anything later on but time is running out the storm is coming and it ain't waiting on me so let's go ahead and get some tools get this hole drilled get this thing out the box and see what we're working with never done this before i don't think it'll be too difficult but you never know and time is ticking come on the legs right here are just for like a if you want to just have one of the small tanks and kind of set it right beside it and have it sitting on the floor Kind of like a uh, space heater, but uh, we're going to do this a little more permanently and mount it to the wall. So hopefully I don't need these. We got a bracket. We got some screws. <laughs> Might have to read the instructions on this. You don't want to mess around with propane. Mess around and blow yourself up. Oh, yeah. Pretty good size heater. Once I get this place insulated, which I did pick up insulation today as well too. It's supposed to be a very nasty day tomorrow. It's supposed to be raining and snowing all day. So I'm gonna do the insulation in the rafters tomorrow. I don't think I'll have time to, today to do it. If I get time tonight, I'm gonna actually start on it tonight. Especially if this is having a hard time keeping up. All right, it looks like there's only four, four screws that I'm gonna need to put in to actually mount it onto the wall. And from right here to the bottom of the heater is 16 inches. So I'm gonna need to measure up 16 inches from here if I want the heater to be right here at the bottom. So I'm probably gonna measure up, I want it to be a little bit higher than this. So I'll probably measure up about 18 inches and then go ahead and mount this, make sure it's level. And we'll get this thing hanging and then we'll go ahead and plumb up all the propane line Make sure we don't have no leaks and stuff. Drill our hole in the wall. I want to kind of get it mounted to kind of see. It just pops on and off, so it's real easy. I want to see what it looks like. That way I can determine exactly where I want to mount the hole to be able to run the line in because I don't want it to be as exposed. I don't want it to expose it as much as possible. If I can hide it behind the heater or somewhere like that, I would love to do that. So let's, let's go ahead and get started. So right here's the 90. I ended up having to get another piece to bring it up a size to be able to fit because that's all the hardware store had. But this is an eight foot hose, which is plenty long enough. And then I also got a five foot hose to be able to move those tanks around and get the tanks exactly where I want them. All right, let me show you what it ended up like. I got the, I got the 90 on there, increasing the size here. I don't have all the sizes with me offhand. We figured it up, I believe this right here. Is three quarters. I believe this is half inch. 
believe this right here is half inch, jumped up to three quarters. It's the way that I had to do it in order to get this to work, to be able to extend it longer like I wanted. Plus we added another one right here. This right here is gonna go through the wall and go outside to the other hose. Which the reason why I wanted such a long hose, I'm wanting to keep the tanks up underneath the canopy back there so they don't get all old. So they'll last longer, so they're not steady getting weathered on and the regulator's not steady getting weathered on. Try to make the tanks last a little bit longer. Those tanks are expensive. They was $200 a piece empty. So I'm gonna try to make them last a little while. You set them outside and they just rust and, and they'll end up going bad. I'll end up turning them into a barbecue row before it's over with when they do go bad. But I don't want that to be for many, many years. All right, let's get this thing hung back up on the wall. That way I can see where I'm gonna need to drill my hole. there we're getting close let me show you see the little pinhole we're almost there whoo we're in there like swimwear All right, we got a hole all the way through. But I can tell you one thing, that part of the log is not rotten. Come on. See, let me show you. See, that's why I, I went down. I wanted to keep a nice little bend in it like that. I didn't want it to kind of kink. So now that we got that shoved through, we'll go on the other side. We'll connect the five foot piece to it and we should have plenty, plenty of line to be able to run to the tanks. All right, so right here, we got the hose going through and it makes it right here at the end of the cabin and right here, you have your lean to i'm wanting to put the tanks right here right beside this window so it almost makes it by itself and i still have a five foot piece so i think we'll be good i'll probably put one tank here and one tank there that way it's not in the way of the window all right let's get the tanks in place they have it All right, now I'm gonna put a tie down strap, hook it to the edge of the log right here and just tighten it up just a little bit, just in case the wind starts blowing hard or something, I don't have to worry about them. Now, as far as it running down the wall right here, I actually do have some brackets to be able to put it like that nice all the way down i don't have screws right now to screw those in so right now this is going to have to work until i get to run to town and get those that way my only slack will be right here around the tanks never take your warning labels and stuff off anything to do with propane it might even be against the law it is in florida i don't i don't know about here in arkansas but you always leave them on there And never over tighten. 
That's why they just put this little plastic thing on right here. The way it's hand tightened. All right, now we're gonna grab some dish soap and put dish, dish soap around all the connections and test for leaks. I normally like to put dish soap with a little bit of water in a spray bottle, but I don't have a spray bottle. So I'm just gonna use dish soap. It'll still work the same. If you see any bubbles, that means you got leaks. We're gonna start on the inside. Ooh, I hope this heats the cabin, guys. I hope it heats the cabin. All right, let's check it out. It's gonna make a mess, but I'd rather have a mess. No bubbles there. Pop that, make sure. We have a couple more connections here. Like we got any bubbles there and even though this is a factory one we're still going to test it just for safety no bubbles and i don't think i've ever tested the tank one before but we're going to well there we go no leaks and the tank's on Let's fire it up and see what it looks like. We need to put the cover back on it though. Purge it first. Let's hold it down. Kind of like you would whenever you're starting one of those RV ovens. There we go. I don't know if it's showing up on camera or not, but it's starting to glow. We have heat. Well, one more project down, guys. Hopefully, this right here will help keep me heated tonight when the snowstorm comes in here. It's not gonna be a lot of snow, but it is gonna get down into the teens, so it's gonna be pretty cold. So I'm gonna put a fan in the area to kind of circulate the heat, and hopefully, this does the trick. But next up, but on the next video, we're gonna have to tackle this. We have got to insulate the ceiling. But I'll go ahead and show you a preview. But I got what I need. I just gotta find time to get it done. I'll probably start working on that tonight. I'll go ahead and film that and bring you guys along with that too. I wanna thank you guys for joining me on this video. If you haven't liked and subscribed to the channel yet, please make sure that you do. That way you can see all the new videos that I put out because we got a lot of adventures coming up. But right now we're just getting set up, trying to get the cabin livable so I can get out of here full time. It's coming soon. Literally in the next two and a half weeks, I'll be here full time. And that is when the work begins. All right, guys, until we see each other again, come on. Let's go on another adventure.